So just going back, Hank, could you go back to Technologies Network? And I want to drill you on some of the other products that you that we've we haven't discussed. So um, come on, there we go. Technologies and networking. All right. So we've discussed DNA. So just my you know thirty second summary. And correct me if I'm wrong. That's positioned at enterprise, so wireless, uh, WAN. Uh, campus type networks. Then we've got uh, APIC, sorry, ACI, should I say, which is specifically for the data center. And then I see NSO. And from what I've seen, that came from, I can't remember the history now, it, 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 I, I can't remember, but NetConf, there was a company that Cisco bought. Um, they were big NetConf or Yang people, I think. And that became NSO. Is that, is that correct? And that's more service provider. Ah, I'm actually glad you brought it up. NSO is a product that I've been spending a lot of time on lately and I'm super interested at. And so you're right, it's it's an acquisition we made. The company we acquired was TalF, and they were very big in the NetConf Yang. If you look at the RFC standards, um, you'll see um, folks from TalF um, were part of all of those RFC standards in the IETF that are there around NetConf and Yang and ResConf, and they continue on those individuals as well as Cisco continue to be very involved in the standards bodies around model driven programmability. Um, what NSO is, NSO is a, a network configuration management, both at the device as well as at the service concept to manage networks. And Telef was definitely originally kind of targeted at the larger service provider customers and, and the NSO product um, it was built and designed and it's it's super rock solid it can, and it can manage hundreds of thousands of devices very efficiently very quickly as it goes through however the reason they were originally targeting the service provider customers or at least in, in hank's opinion was because those were the customers that had a requirement and a need for that type of network automation and network configuration uh, a decade ago right they were they were the only one that were only ones that were kind of demanding that level of automation at that point and so NSO kind of that's who their product and that's who their or that's who their customers were were the large ones today every customer that i talk to large small medium and i, I when i say small um, very small customers with small networks made up of maybe one or two network engineers it, it doesn't matter who you are today Everybody is trying to figure out how to do a better job at automating and managing the configurations across their networks. It's not just the service providers anymore. And so the features and capabilities that NSO offer for network management, for managing and config, managing the configurations and doing it efficiently and providing an ability to kind of understand and, and suck in current state configuration and immediately make that available um, in a programmatic way, is relevant for every customer, not just the service providers. And so I actually, I've got a video that I did with another engineer at Cisco where we're, I call it busting myths about NSO. And the first one we try to bust is that NSO is only relevant for service providers, which isn't true anymore. It's, it's relevant for any customer that has a network that they want to have an, an efficient way to manage the configurations and kind of in, in go through. What's more, one of the things that's really unique about NSO, if you look at it kind of in the other configuration management tools for the network, and, and often that kind of falls under those open source DevOps tools that we've talked about, Puppet, Chef, Ansible. All of those tools kind of require that you start from ground zero automating the network. You're building playbooks, you're building manifests, you're building descriptions about what you want to configure the network. And the question I, I get time and time again when talking with engineers is, well, how do I take my existing network and turn that into an Ansible playbook? And that's a huge challenge. It, like, there really is no easy way to do that. The, what you have to do is just kind of start building your playbooks point by point. NSO has a huge leg up in the configuration management space for the network because the way that it functions is it can go out and it can discover the current configuration across your entire network and then that immediately gets pulled in as it sits and you can start programming it and using NSO to manage that moving forward. So it has this huge leg up because it can, it can give an existing network that's been around for, for five years and has been managed in a traditional kind of CLI, hands-on keyboard type of a model. You can go from that to having that all managed under configuration management NSO 
in, in about an hour, well, however long it takes for the NSO to go out, query and pull in the configurations. As soon as you do that, that entire network configuration is now available through a single API that you can then manage with NSO. It is a wonderful product for every customer looking for a way to manage their network. So that's kind of like a controller, is that right? It's a similar concept to having a controller or central device management type device, is that right? So I would say, I, I hesitate to call it a controller because it's very much specific around configuration management components. So controllers do can do configuration management, but a controller tends to do lots of other stuff too, right? They're they're gathering in yeah. operational state. They're 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 doing other things. Like a controller is a subset it does, or a superset. It does way more than just config management and orchestration and automation. NSO is very much kind of targeted at configuration management of the network. It stores the configurations. It lets you kind of build and issue transactions. It, it gives you the ability to 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 watch the change history across the configs. But you're not going to use NSO to say, well, what's the operational state of, of the uplink to the WAN? NSO is not going to give you that. It's it's not it's not looking at the um, the operational details. It's it's very much kind of at the configuration component. So I, I call it a, a network automation tool, orchestration tool, or broadly that category. I, I call them configuration management tools. That's that's what NSO is after. Is it's it's doing the configuration management um, of your of your network. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because when you were describing it, I was getting a bit confused between, okay, so Hank, let's say I want to learn, and I, I don't know if this is possible if we can position it this way. Let's say I, I'm a network engineer and I work at a small company. Which product would you suggest I look at then? <laughs> if I'm a network engineer, it's very horror, hard questions. Yeah. So if you can't answer, that's fine. But you know, like just looking from the outside, if I if I'm a if I'm a network engineer at a small company, which product would you suggest I look at? And I mean, there's no answer to everyone, obviously. But where should I start, kind of thing? And then, what about a medium-sized customer? What about a large customer? Do you have any sort of recommendations, or at least places to start looking? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a really good question, but it's also a, it's a hard one to answer. Um, yeah. I'm th thinking through the answer. I, I don't know if I would I would change the recommendations based on the size of a company, um, because I, I don't think that that matters as much. I mean, if you're a really really small company, um, maybe it makes a bit of a difference. But but uh, the types of networks that are there are less to do, I think, with the size of the company and more to do with 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 what project you're you're exploring at a given point in time. Um, in general, we, we recommend a lot of customers, if they're trying to figure out, take a look at the DNA architecture and DNA Center platform. We've done a lot of innovations in changing the way that kind of enterprise networks are designed. Um, and we'll talk about it on the call with Jason about what software to find accesses and SDA, SD-WAN, all of that stuff kind of fits into the to the DNA message that's there. So that's a, that's a good one, I think, that everybody should at least start to get exposed to that's there. Um, but if the project you're after is very specifically in the data center, or if your role is a data center engineer, um, looking at DNA doesn't make a ton of sense because, again, that's focused in enterprise. And I would say look at ACI, look at the Nexus platforms because those those fit those spaces better. If you work at a service provider customer, um, that's where iOS XR as the, the operating system for those, those devices. So these are things like the ASR 9K, um, the NCS platform, and these are platforms that are very much designed and targeted at large service providers or very large enterprises that have parts of their network that look and feel like a service provider network. And so if, if that's the type of work you do, then, then XR makes a ton of sense. I might also say that if you're in that space, looking at NSO makes a ton of sense because that is the traditional customer base for NSO. But across all of those, whether you're your enterprise and campus or your data center or service provider, um, there, there are a core set of skills and knowledge that I think span across all of them. So basic API fundamentals, basic Python, the things that we've talked about in other videos. But that's an area where I think starting to learn and get understand kind of where NSO fits into from the Cisco product family. As a network configuration management tool, NSO is, I think, a valuable skill for everybody to go through. Um, we actually just recently made NSO completely free for anybody to download from DevNet for non-production use. And so if you want to explore and learn how that's NSO right. works, um, you want to try it out in your lab against some Cisco infrastructure, you can download NSO right from DevNet 
<clears throat> and for example, if I go in, where is it in the list here? If I go into NSO, um, you can come into, uh, did we add it to the main page yet? It's, it's a very new download, so it looks like it hasn't made the page here. But underneath the docs, we have links for Git NSO for evaluation uh, for Linux or Mac. It is a, it's a Linux-based application, so you do need to install it either on a Mac OS or a, a Linux operating system. But you can download it for evaluation and non-production use directly from DevNet. You have to click the accept the license stuff and log in, but you can download it, install it, and start to get used to um, how it works and, and walk through some of our learning labs um, without any kind of cost at this point. And so that's one of the steps we're making to, to kind of show that NSO has a much broader appeal than just those very large service provider networks because um, that's just not the case anymore. Everybody has the same types of challenges that service providers have. It's just with less devices. And I would say that if I've got a tool that, that can successfully manage 100,000 or 300,000 devices for the big service providers, it can probably handle the 50 or 60 devices that I have in my own network, right? Definitely. Yeah, so I mean, we're running out of time, Hank, so let's circle back. The place to start is on the front page. Yep. You've got that start here thing. So if I'm kind of still like, okay, it's overwhelming. <laughs> I don't know where to start. That's the place to go. Is that right? Yes, I would say that is definitely the place to go. We'll make sure that we include a link for it that you can put into the, the notes and the video stuff as well so people can find it. That is definitely a great place to start if you're just trying to figure out how to get kind of exposed to some of these pieces. And I mean, we've run out of time, but it, we're just scratching the surface here, it feels. But I, I think that's a that gives at least people watching this um, a place to go to to get started and to continue their journey. Um, and just to summarize then, if I'm in an enterprise environment, then DNA mm -hmm. is a product to look at. If I'm in a data center environment, then ACI. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm doing configuration management like NetConf APIs, then NSO is a great product to look at. So if I'm like an enterprise guy, I should look at DNA and NSO. If I'm a, a data center guy, um, ACI, NSO. Is that is that correct summarization? I think you, you did it in far fewer words than I tend to do, but that's a great summarization, David. No, that's brilliant. I mean, at least it's, everyone's got something to take take home, you know, and they can start on start now on DevNet. Mm -hmm. So Hank, I know we've run out of time, so I'll wrap it up. Thanks so much again, as always, for spending so much time with me and explaining all of this stuff. It's so confusing in the beginning and you've kind of simplified it. So thanks very much. Absolutely. I think it was fun. And this gives us a lot of kind of material for, for future videos. We can spend some time on, on all of these areas. So Yeah, that'd be great. So um, again, thanks, Hank. And everyone, if you want to get hold of Hank, he's very active on Twitter. You can also get hold of me on Twitter. I'll put up the handles on the video and in, in below the video. Give us a shout if, if you want to learn more about specific technologies. And lastly, Hank, again, thanks very much. Absolutely. Thanks again, David.